Hey, what's going on, everyone? Rowan McClendon here for the Wayne's and Pearl of Bibles video. Got it, Mama. What's going on, everyone? Thanks for joining us for another Bible study video. I want you to be here, and it means a lot that you are here, because uh, God's always got something that he wants to tell us. Um, he's always got something he's trying to work on you, on your heart. Um, and it means a lot that you're here actively seeing and seeking God. So I'm glad you're here. Um, love you guys. I've been reading Matthew, um, just kind of beginning, just kind of, it's a really good place just to kind of see God's work. And, um, right now he's just laying down some truth bombs in the sermon, um, just with a big crowd of people that are so used to living a certain way. And the world is so used to living a certain and broken way. And right now he's flipping the world upside down with his teachings. He's showing us that, hey, this is what true love looks like. This is what it's going to be like. And let me teach you a thing or two about my love. And it doesn't stop here. So Luke chapter 5, verse 43, the passage is love your enemies. And um, before this, he was just talking about uh, retaliation for your brother. So, um, you know, he's saying that if someone slaps you, turn the other cheek. Um, we're so used to, you know, an eye for an eye. But really, if someone slaps us and we slap them just as hard, um, are we not just as angry as they are? Are we not just as guilty of um, anger towards a brother as they are? That's what he's talking about. And these are the things that this world is not used to. Um, we're not used to just letting things go and letting love take control. We're used to... You hurt me, I'm going to hurt you just as bad. But that's why we have a God. That's why we have Jesus to come and save us. And he's really flipping the world upside down. And it's really cool. And it doesn't stop here. So let's get into it. So verse 43. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. So... I'm not going to lie. The first time I ever read this, my first thought was, is like, what now? Not only do you not want me to retaliate on somebody, but I need to love them and pray for them. That's a pretty big ticket to order there, Jesus. I don't know if I can really serve that one up. But this is just a testimony of how great his love is for his people. This is only a testimony of that he loves every, every single child of his is just as loved, just as much as the one next to him. If you're the most holy person on this earth, or you're, you're a sinner and you've been so broken in life, he loves those people just the same. Because I guarantee this, he doesn't see us as this or that. Because we are all sinners from the, from the day we were born. Now, let me set the kind of fact here that God hates sin. So he hates sin so much that he did not bring sin into our lives. It came here because he gave us free will. Because he didn't want to be this controlling powerhouse God. Because that's not really love. If he were to control us and make us be puppets, that's not love. That's not true love. He gave us free will and he gave us morals of good and bad in our heart from the day we were born. From the day we were created. And he didn't bring sin to the world. We did. We brought sin into the world. So we are all guilty of sin. But because God gave us Jesus to make a sacrifice on the cross, we do not have to die for that sin. We do not have to be in a lifetime of sorrow and darkness. We don't have to be drowned in that sin. It can be washed away in the blood of the Lamb. But the world cannot change 
if we do not listen. We can't bring love into the world if we don't understand what true love is. And this right here is true love. Think about someone that you hate. And right now you're probably thinking of the opposite politician that you like so much. Because that's how our brain works. That's how society works. We pick this side or that side and then we hate the other side no matter what. Um, but God's telling us that person that you have so much sorrow about, that person that you cannot control, love them and pray for them. Whoa! Let's look into what loving your enemy is, okay? So we know God wants us to love our enemies and pray for them. Um, but what does that look like? Are we supposed to go up to them and just like... Hey, I hate you, but I love you. That doesn't make any sense. That'd be the most confusing conversation of all time. So what he's saying to us within this message, because the sun rises, because he gives rain to the just and unjust, to the evil and the good, because he loves us all. So he loves everyone the same. Our society, our world, our broken world, brings so much uh, anger to the flesh. It wants our egos to be built so, so much. And it wants to be just so full of our own ego that we, we can't even see how we treat others. We don't even see how we love each other. And this is like a truth bomb of love saying that if we only pray, love, talk, to our brothers, if we only talk to the people that we like, if we only conversate with the people that we know that we're comfortable with, how's anything going to get better in the world? How's How are we going to get better as people if we don't even understand people that are outside of this close-knit circle that we create for ourselves? He says, go talk to those people that maybe you don't like. Have a conversation with that other side of people that maybe you don't agree with. And let them know at the end of the day, hey, we may have disagreements. We may not like each other. We might not like each other's views. But I love you. And I'm praying for you. Not to show you that I'm this better person. It's because God, God wants me to love you. God wants me to pray for you. Because God loves all of us. There's no bounds for God's love. So much so that he wants to see that love work through us. God isn't just this power-hungry guy that wants to show that he's so much better than us. That he is, we're just, you know, dirt underneath his shoe. He wants us to take these lessons of how much his love, what his love looks like, and really apply it to the person beside you that you don't even know maybe, or maybe you don't even like them. That's insane. And that's very challenging and scary. You know, when I first read this once again, I kind of got scared. It's like, oh, there's a lot of people that I might not like that much. But God really flipped my heart upside down and showed me that I can't treat others this way and others the other. Because God doesn't do that. He wants us to be molds of him and he understands we're not perfect he knows that but that's why he brought jesus that's why he brought these lessons to show us that we're so unperfect that we need a god that we need a king like him because if we keep loving each other the way we've been loving each other if we keep treating each other the way we've been treating each other i'm really scared for what our world's gonna look like like sincerely scared but since we have a father so good like him we have a teacher that is so good like him we have a chance to really bring good into the world and to each other think about that person that you might not like think about that person that's kind of under your skin love them pray for them and if you think how am I supposed to love someone like that just think about how God loved you when you were deep in sin. Think about how God loves you, even though all of the bad things that you've done. We are all 
guilty of bad things. We are all guilty of sin. I, you know, sin is sin, no matter what. But because he loves us so much, he gave us a, a second chance of a new life. But he's tired of seeing his children tear each other apart. He's tired of seeing us just break his world more and more and more. He loves his creation so much. And he wants to start seeing some for real love with each other. People that you don't know, people you don't like. They deserve love just like you do. They've been sinful just like you have. They are needing Jesus just as much as you. So they deserve love just as much as you. And God loves him just as much as you. So why shouldn't we? And the unfortunate thing, you know, I can say all this, but it doesn't mean anything unless we actually do it. We got to walk the talk, church. We actually got to go to those people that we have disagreements that we may not like. And we got to love on them. We got to pray for them. We got to be there for our people, for our brothers and sisters. And I just pray that we go away from this video and do these things. Put our actions on the field and do these things. Let's go. Come on. Let's not wait for tomorrow. Let's do it right now. Because that person that you may not like needs love. Just like you do. And needs prayers just like you do. But God's love can't be fulfilled if we just talk and talk and talk and don't do. There must be actions to these words. You know, Jesus didn't come in the world and just say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save a bunch of people and then just kind of walk past them. No, he saved them. He didn't just say what he was going to do. He did what he was going to do. I just challenge us for the same things. Hey, I love you. I'm praying for you. The camera's over here. I'm praying for you. And I love you. And I hope you pray for me and love me. I need it so bad. I'm a, I'm a broken person that needing of Jesus. And I need those prayers big time. Connect with people at the church. Give us a message. Message me, whoever. But just connect with someone. Maybe talk to that person you're having a tough time with. Pray for them and love for them. And I love you. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye.